So how on earth do you decide and determine a new hire salary? It can feel like just a kind of a shot in the dark. So there are two areas of small business when an owner can resort to gut feel faster than any other. One is who to hire, and the second, how to compensate that new hire. We were a few months into coaching a business owner when the time approached for her to hire a new role in her contracting business. After, after helping her think through what to offload to the new team member, write the role, and determine the onboarding process, something that she had never done before, the next obvious question came. So, how much will you offer in compensation? Her response, I have no idea. The good news is, she's not alone. The bad news is, that strategy will almost always lead to a bad outcome down the road. Employee salaries are a bit like government programs. Once set and offered, they become a little difficult to retract and adjust. So what factors should be involved in determining a new higher salary and what factors should we pay less attention to? It would first help to refocus on a question we rarely ask. What's the point of an employee salary? Well, business owners often feel a responsibility to provide for our employees. That's uh, not necessarily true. It's the job of the employee to provide for themselves and their family, and it's their decision on how to get that done. The business, on the other hand, is one vehicle that can be used for the provision for each employee in the business if, if the business is generating enough margin to indeed provide compensation. Culturally, we tend to believe that businesses magically make money and that employee salary should naturally increase in direct response to time. In other words, the longer a person's on the job, the more money they should make. And obviously, this is a very damaging thought. I worked with a fellow employee years ago who was at, at the company we were at for over a decade and was making double what myself and other less experienced employees were making, and yet he continuously underperformed. In essence, he was being rewarded year after year for simply showing up <laughs> and maintaining a pulse. Employee compensation should be built and continued based on the value the employee brings to their role and overall to delivering on the mission of the business. So, how do we determine employee compensation that aligns with business revenue generation and aligns with business profitability? Well, we've got to listen to our business and hear what it's telling us based on what's actually happening in the business. So, there are four things I'd like to walk you through. Number one, you've got to know your numbers. As a reminder, we're not financial professionals and make it clear that we are offering suggestions based on what we've seen other businesses do. So make sure you consult with a financial professional when making these decisions. Knowing your numbers sounds really obvious and yet most business owners do not know their total revenue, their cost of goods or their gross margins, at least in dollars or in percentages, or what Mike Michalowicz offer author of Profit First calls real revenue. That's your total revenue minus your cost of goods sold. Seeing your net income on the bottom of a profit and loss statement, that's nice and it's necessary, but it's not the entire story. We must be aware of all of the numbers below your total revenue and above your net income, all of that stuff in the middle. So what percentage of your real revenue is spent on personnel, taxes, insurance, fees, dues, equipment, communication, marketing, etc.? Once you know these, then you can begin to compare those numbers over the past few years and then determine if you're light or if you're heavy in each area based on the return that you're receiving from each one of those investments in the line items. The money you're investing in marketing, for instance, is it generating leads? The money you're investing in software tools, is it producing efficiency in production? The money you're investing in people, is it producing sales? It is impossible to set a new hire salary or to even know if you can afford to hire a new person if you do not listen to the numbers that your business is using to speak to you. The second step to determine your new hire salary is to set your ratio. What in the world is that? Well, I heard a few years ago that the average new hire salary should be set to a ratio of one to three. So what does that mean? Well, essentially, look at it like this. For every dollar that you invest in a new employee role, that role should either A, generate an additional $3 in revenue, one to three, or B, free someone else up to go generate an additional $3 of revenue. 
The 1 to 3 ratio is not set in stone. It's simply a suggested starting point. But we have found experientially that the closer the role is to sales, direct production, the higher the ratio will likely be. One business that we coach runs a 1 to 7 ratio for each salesperson they hire. Not for any administrative or any other role, but for the sales role. One to seven. In other words, if they compensate a salesperson at one hundred thousand dollars annually, then they expect each salesperson to generate seven hundred thousand dollars in real revenue. That's not total revenue. That's total revenue minus cost of goods sold. So, using a ratio of one to two actually doesn't make much sense, or below one to two doesn't make much sense, because you're simply breaking even on a role that's meant to help you generate additional profit. So make sure that you're not any lower than one to two, uh, but then you can go up the closer a person is aligned directly with production. The third step in determining a new higher salary is to run the calculation based on your ratio and then see what the numbers are telling you. As an example, let's say that you've decided to pay your new accounting role a salary of $40,000 annually. But before we apply your ratio, we've got to understand that that's not the full story. The business is also responsible for payroll taxes and a variety of other unseen expenses like increased fees on software licenses and insurance premiums. As a practice, we calculate an additional 26% on each employee's annual salary when running our budget numbers for a new hire. So when deciding to pay $40,000 in annual compensation, we're actually budgeting a salary of $40,000 plus 26% on top, which comes to a total of $50,400 in U.S. dollars annually that the business much budget for. We then apply our chosen ratio not to the $40,000, but instead to the $50,400 annual compensation number. In this case, we will select a 1 to 3 ratio to run our calculation. So this means for every dollar we invest in our new hire at a compensation level of $50,400, we expect to see a return of $3 from our new hire to real revenue of $151,200. Again, either this new hire will directly generate an additional $151,200 in revenue for each year, or this new hire will free up another employee to go generate an additional $151,200 in each revenue year. The final step in determining a new hire salary is to set the number and run the model. Your starter salary is always going to be a bit of an educated guess. Of course, you can consult human resource databases of market and industry compensation comparisons, and this is not a bad place to begin to get some initial numbers in your head. But determining a salary is both art and science. The art is having your head on a swivel and looking around. The science is knowing your numbers and setting that ratio. Run the simple calculation and then determine your final number. If you have to negotiate up on your salary in order to be more competitive in bringing in a new hire, that's fine. Just know that it will also increase the real revenue number that the new hire is expected to generate. Having that conversation with a new hire can be very freeing for you as a business owner and also very eye-opening for the new hire to let them know that you've done your homework and have been very thoughtful about their role. So know your numbers. Set your ratio, run your calculation, define the number, and have confidence in your new hire process. Your business and your new hire will appreciate the hard work 